Okay, guys, we are going to do a traditional algorithm long division with decimals in the dividend, and this is part two. So in part one, we talked about what happens when you divide the numbers with decimals in the dividend, but it does end at the last, uh, the last digit of your dividend. In this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go beyond the numbers in our dividend. We are still going to use the, tricks, the, the strategies and tricks that we used before, not tricks technically, the strategies. So we've got divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down as our normal traditional algorithm piece. And then we're also going to use our decimal elevator. And we're going to talk a little bit about zeros here to kick this off. So if we look at these numbers, so zeros are important. They, uh, they can change numbers, um, and they can change the value of numbers, and they can also, they're, technically there are lots of zeros out there that we don't write down, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So if we look at these numbers, this is, they all start with four and five, but in this case, this first one is 45, this one is 450, this is 45,000, and this is 45 trillion. Super big, right? So you can see that these zeros, when they're put in the whole number side of our decimal, they're really going to change our value, right? So this is, this is getting much bigger as we get down to the bottom. Actually looks pretty similar. Now, the next thing I want you to look at, so these are the same number of zeros as the last one. It, however, notice what's happening. 45 is the whole number for each one of these, but after the decimal, I have zeros. So technically, these numbers are all equal. So these zeros placed after our decimal are gonna make this number the same, but look a little different. So technically, every number has an infinite number of zeros afterwards. Now, we don't write them all because that would just be a waste of our time, right? We don't, if we don't need them, we don't need to write them. But this concept that these zeros exist past here are gonna be really helpful when we're doing some of these long division problems when we're gonna need the zeros, okay? We may only need one zero afterwards, we might need two, we might need three or four, but there's an infinite number after that decimal each time. Okay, so let's talk about this. So we are, again, we are going to hit our decimal elevator up and we're also gonna make our, our estimation. So if we think about this, how many times do we think six could go into 43? So 43 divided by six. Now, if we think back to our facts, six times seven is 42. So our estimate is gonna be about seven times. So first thing we need to do is hit that decimal elevator button that was easy, right? So we're going to put our decimal elevator up here. Then we are ready to do our standard long division. So can six go into four? Nope. Can it, zero times six is zero. Subtract four, bring down our three. Can six go into 43? Yes, it goes in seven times. Seven times six is 42. Subtract and I get one, bring down my six. Can six go into 16? Yes, it goes in just twice. Two times six is 12. Subtract and I get four. Bring down my two. Two. Four, six goes into 42. How many times? Seven. Seven times six is 42 subtract and get zero. So this is the type of problem we were doing in part one, where we used the numbers in our original dividend and we didn't need to go any farther, okay? So this was what we covered in part one, just in case you didn't get a chance to see it, but this is your standard way where you don't need to add any zeros. Next, we're gonna get into some zeros at the end and we're gonna need them. So if we look at this number, our first thing we're going to do is estimate, can five go into eight, or how many times about would five go into eight? It goes in about one time. Now, if we look at this last number, this three, remember our divisibility by five has to end in five or zero. So I know that's not going to go in evenly. So I'm going to end up needing zeros, but here we go. So how many times is five going to eight? One, oh, you know what we forgot? Hold on. We forgot to hit our decimal elevator. So take our decimal elevator straight up to here, right? Then we are ready to do our math. So can five go into eight? Yes, it goes in one time. One times five is five. Subtract and I get three. Bring down my seven. 
three goes into five goes into 37 seven times so my seven goes up here on the top seven times five is 35 minus two bring down your three five goes into 23 four times four times five is 20 subtract and I get three okay now this is what I'm talking about. We have three left over. We're not gonna put remainder three because we have a decimal already. Technically this 0.74 or 74 hundredths is already talking about a remainder because a remainder is anything that's less than a whole. So what we're gonna end up doing here, this is where those zeros are gonna come in handy. So we are gonna take a zero and we're gonna add this zero over here. We don't need to add a ton of them. We're gonna add one at a time in case we need them, okay? So now we're gonna be able to bring this zero down. Five goes into 36 times. Six times five is 30. Subtract and I get zero. So now you can see we're down to zero. We've gotten all the way down. And this zero up here, our extra zero was handy in making sure that we were able to complete our problem. If we compare this to our estimate, we estimated about one. The answer was a little more than one. Let's try another one. Okay, this one. Now here is the thing. We're gonna start off with this because it doesn't have a decimal in this yet. However, we're gonna eventually need it. So, because so sometimes you get to this and you realize, oh gosh, I need a decimal. So eight goes into five zero times. Zero times eight is zero. Subtract and I get five. Bring down my seven. Eight goes into 57 seven times. Seven times eight is 56. Subtract and I get one. Now you could, depending on what the specifications for your, um, for your remainder are, sometimes it's just to put the R Sometimes it's to put, represent it as a fraction. If we are representing them as decimals, this is how we go about it. So technically, this number has a decimal point right here because this is our tens place, ones place, and then our decimal goes there. So we're gonna hit our decimal elevator button and take that straight up, okay? That was easy, right? We're ready to stop. Now, we have technically a zero here, right? So we can bring this down, zero. Then once we have that, how many times will eight go into 10? It goes in one time, eight, subtract, and I get two. Now I'm not done. I'm gonna add another zero, bring that zero down. How many times does eight go into 20? It goes in twice. Two times eight is 16 subtract and I get four and you can in both of these we probably I should have regrouped here sorry it's taking a shortcut and I shouldn't have then I'm still not done I'm going to add a zero here bring it down eight goes into 40 how many times it goes in five times five times eight is 40 subtract and we get zero okay Oh, gosh, you know what? I forgot to do my estimation. My goodness, I'm forgetting all sorts of things. So my estimation, so even if you don't do it at the beginning, you could technically do it at the end. How many times will, oh dear, this should be an eight. Eight go into 57. It goes in about seven times because eight times seven is 56. All right, let's try this one. So first things first, decimal elevator. We're gonna take it straight up. Then how many times does nine go into, oh, let's do our, gosh, I keep forgetting my estimation. How many times will nine go into 47? Nine times five is 45, so it's gonna be about five times. Nine goes into four, zero times. Zero times nine is zero. Subtract and I get four. Bring down my seven. Nine goes into 47 five times. Five times nine is 45. Subtract and I get two bring down my three. Nine goes into 23 twice. Two times nine is 18. Subtract and I get, I'm going to need to regroup here. 13 minus eight is five. Now this is where we're going to need another zero. Bring down the zero. So nine goes into 50. Five times. Nine times five is 45. Subtract and I get five, right? Bring down another zero. 
Now you're going to notice something here in just a second. 9 goes into 50 five times again. 9 times 5 is 45. Subtract and I get 5 again. What you're going to notice here is that this we're going to continue getting 5. So this is what we call a repeating decimal meaning that this decimal will go on and on and on and on forever and ever and ever. So 5.255555 forever. So the shortcut, the mathematical shortcut, is to draw a small line over the number or digit that repeats. Sometimes it's more than one number. In this case, it's just one. So 5.25 repeating would be your answer. Okay? All right, one last one. Now, this one is interesting. We'll talk about why in just a second. So how many times does 7 go into 68? It goes in approximately 9 times. So decimal elevator straight up right there. Okay, can 7 go into 68? Can 7 go into 68? Yes, it goes in 9 times. So I, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm taking that shortcut. I'm not going to go seven into six, right? Because seven goes into six zero times. Kind of use my zero as a placeholder. Seven go into 68 nine times. So 63, subtract and I get five, bring down my nine. Seven goes into 59 eight times. Eight times seven is 56. Subtract and I get three, bring down my six. Seven goes into 36 five times. Seven times five is 35. Subtract and I get one, my extra zero here, bring down my zero. Seven goes into 10 one time, one times seven is seven. We get three, zero, bring it down, we get 30. Seven goes into 30 four times, four times seven is 28. Now, here's the thing. Um, in many cases, a teacher or um, a, you know, a worksheet or whatever will tell you how many places past the decimal you need to go. Typically, I will say the, lar the longest you need to go is four places past the decimal. Um, so in that case, you could just stop here. You don't need to do anything down here with this two that's left over. You're just stopping at the end. You're just cutting it off. Um, this number actually goes on and on and on and on. So um, it is, it's going to keep going. And... Um, yeah, so this is definitely a number that, that you wouldn't want to keep going on and on. You want to listen to the directions and go either two or four places past the decimal, depending on your teacher or your worksheet. So this is traditional long division with decimals in the dividend when they don't end at the end of your dividend. So thanks for listening. Bye.